All right, welcome to this first tutorial in this series on how to create video essays. Uh, I'm Christian Lee. Welcome to uh, to the first one in the series. I just want to mention that um, you can put your questions down in the comments below and I'll base my next videos on the questions you have for me down there. So I'm, I'm constantly trying to listen to the problems that you have when it comes to creating videos like this one, uh, like the ones that I'm creating, um, so that you know I can help you as much as possible, right? So make sure you do that. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. This is my video creation process. Uh, this website here is called Notion. It's a great website for creating checklists. And uh, I always, uh, or I, I can't say I always use checklists, but I try as much as possible. This is actually something new that I started implementing because as you can see here, there's a lot of stuff going on when I'm editing my videos and it's hard to remember everything, right? This um, this check checklist right here keeps uh, things a little bit more focused and clear. All right, so the first thing that I do before I, uh, or when I'm gonna create a new video is that I set a date for when the next video is gonna be published. So I give myself maybe uh, one week, two weeks, maximum three or four weeks, right, per video. Uh, this is great so that you don't procrastinate because you, you know you have a deadline to reach and um, you have to be strict with yourself, you know. If you have a deadline, then you can't, you have to publish the video at that point, no matter what. And you, you can only tell yourself that you've done as good as you can, right? And so you publish it. It's it's very bad to just uh, procrastinate and, and uh, put the deadline further and further or uh, in front of you, you know, postponing it. So then you set a fixed date for finishing each of the work processes. You don't have to do this yet because you maybe you're just starting out creating a video process or editing process. Uh, but I've got several section sections here like script and voiceover, uh, character design, um, digital painting, com compositing, and so on and so forth. So I like to set a date for each of these parts. Maybe I'll I want to finish the script and voiceover within the um, the third of uh, May, right? So then I just put that date up here so that I keep that in mind that if it's starting to uh, dawn on me that it's it's the fourth and I'm one day behind and I'm still not finishing uh, finished with this part yet, then I need to hurry up. So I'm always kind of pacing myself throughout this process, right? Uh, again, you don't have to do this. Uh, this is also something I'll talk about later. So script and voiceover. And this is something that you might recognize, right? Script and voiceover. When you uh, first start out, um, when, when you've selected a topic that you want to talk about, that you want to make a video essay about, you want to write a draft and you want to do research, right? And what I often do is I open a Google document. Uh, so you just search for Google Docs, right? Google Docs and you can open a new uh, Google document. When you research, you, you just wanna write a draft. Uh, this is just spewing everything that you find out on a page. You want it to be original words. You want them to be your words. You don't wanna just copy stuff from articles and videos, but you, want, you don't want it to be good writing, right? Don't worry about that to begin with. Then you refine your draft. You write a second version of your draft. And this can be your final if, if you wanted to, or you can write a third draft as well. Uh, personally, I, I like to keep it just to, you know, the first version and the second version. Otherwise, I have a tendency to end up in this overthinking state where I'm just, you know, writing the fifth draft and the seventh draft and the 10th draft, and it can get so much better, you know? every time but you know more often you just you just overthink right at least me i'm, I'm a perfectionist uh, who is trying to become more of an optimalist but anyways uh draft refining uh, write your final draft and do thumbnail sketches so this is um i don't know if you watched uh the previous video you probably th did that the previous video that i made right as you can see here, it had all these drawings, very simplistic, 
drawings. Uh, I was meaning to put in more drawings here, but uh, all of these drawings are uh, digital paintings that I painted myself, right? And uh, they didn't start out like this. <laughs> I didn't have all of this in mind when I started doing this. So much like the script, I create a draft, but for the paintings. And a draft for a painting is basically a sketch or a thumbnail. That's uh, basically what we call it. So a thumbnail, it looks like a kid could have drawn it. It's basically a bunch of scribbly lines that, you know, maybe I create a, a round, you know, a uh, circle for his head and a big box for his body. There's some lines here indicating that there's some stairs and there's an upper level, stuff like that. Just very crude. I could have drawn it with my toe, you know. <laughs> it might look like that. So uh, doing that while you're doing the, the script can really help you visualize uh, and both change things about the script and about the thumbnails uh, because you, you, you get your first idea of what the full thing will, the, the full video will sound, sound and feel like and look like, right? Get under 1,500 words uh, and create a segment flow. I don't want you to worry about uh, segment flow. Uh, I don't want you to worry about how many words, uh, but try to try to set a limit, right? Um, because otherwise you can just go on writing forever, I think. Of course, depending on your subject, but at 1,500 words for me in the way that I speak, uh, the way that I'm narrating and recording my voice, that's usually around 10 to 12 minutes, right? So that's just my thing. You can do 500 words or 5,000 if you want to. Okay, next up, add background music and write down the artists and song names in the draft. So this is where I decide what type of background music I want. It's great because, you know, different segments of the essay will have different emotional values. So you, now I'm, I'm getting into the nitty gritty here, but maybe, maybe you're talking about something that's sad. Maybe you're talking about something that's happy. Then you want background music that kind of reflects that, you know, you want to put some thought into that. Great website to check out, um, to find some, great background music is uh, YouTube audio library. You just search YouTube audio library and there's tons of music that you can download for free and uh, implement in your video. You will not get copyrighted. It's um, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that some of these artists need attribution. If you see this creative commons attribution symbol right here, you need to put their um, their information, this information down in your description. But otherwise you can set this to attribution not required. I like to include some that like the name and the name of the song in the description anyways, because I, I think it's amazing that these people are willing to offer their music for free. It's fantastic. So that's the least I can do, you know, I'll offer some, some, uh, some attention to their stuff. If I choose to add interview section se uh, segments, if there's a cool interview and I want to add a short snippet of that interview that I find on YouTube, perhaps, then I add that in as well. I, I try to let's just uh, let's just go to Google Docs for a moment, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So exploring Sunra to <laughs> that was the original original title. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to call the video that yet. I haven't uploaded it yet at this point um, when I'm recording this. But here you can see I've I have these green rectangles. Play clip one, play clip two. Um, I usually like before I I also had a link here. Uh, to the video and, and a timestamp to the uh, part of the video where the person, Sunra in this case, said something that I enjoyed that I thought would be fitting for this part. So um, what I do is I go to YouTube, I find, find a clip, then I go to YouTube to MP3, 
let's see MP <laughs> if you know don't know how to use this uh, this is the base basically the one that I'm using you yt mp3 dot cc um, you just put your link in here convert and choose mp3 and then convert and then uh, it will be downloaded it's that simple okay so you added interview segments then what you do is you read out loud uh, to fine-tune the script this is a great exercise uh, to to get to know your script uh, a little bit better and uh, this can also be your third um, your third draft or your final draft if you want to after you've read it out loud um, I also have this essay sheet that I'm using to kind of check off some of the some of the things that I'm uh, uh, that, that makes my essay a little bit better highlight and uh, end segments that rhyme this is another thing that you don't have to do but it's something that I've found to be uh, an interesting experiment in some of my latest video essays I add some rhyme uh, <laughs> I don't know if you want to do that but that's that's what I try to do nowadays set up soundproof panels so this is something that I'm doing to create better sound what you keep have to keep in mind is that uh, in order to create great sound you need to be in a very small room um, in a place that's quiet in a place that um, that is like I said small if you don't have a small room it can help to put up some uh, some some cushy material <laughs> on the wall I actually searched up I can I can show you if I just go to uh, go to YouTube real quick you can actually create sound panels like this uh, DIY, DIY acoustic panels making my own acoustic panel this is something that you can create it's uh, not the uh, it, it doesn't have to be super complicated it doesn't have to be uh, super pricey as you can see here DIY stuff $50 that's something you can do uh, I did this myself I went outside to uh, my uh, one of my closest handy store shops whatever you want to call it and I bought uh, some material and I made a soundproof panel myself and it works amazing uh, so keep that in mind you don't have to do it but for better audio quality that's amazing an amazing trick okay I just hang them up on my walls these days then you go to VO recording and what's that that's the voice over vo voice the voice over um, this will take a lot of practice um, as you can see here this is my Sunrod document right here um, in Premiere Pro this uh, section here that I'm highlighting is my voiceover and uh, as you can see the song that I have here is one whole entire white piece while these voiceover segments are smaller pieces and that's because I've edited out all the all the small segments all the things that I made all the the, the mistakes I made basically uh, so that I that it won't be a part of the video uh, so that is something that you should keep in mind as well if you make a mistake don't click delete just keep on making mistakes make the same like read the same thing over and over again until you get it right and then afterwards you can edit out the mistakes later that will save you a ton of time <laughs> trust me I've, I've uh, I did the previous thing so many times in the past and uh, that's not something I want to do again so the last thing the last segment of the script and voiceover part is finishing finish editing and cutting voiceover with compressor and deesser effects if you search up compressor in premiere pro and deesser in premiere pro on youtube you'll find a ton of tutorials on how to again make the the audio a little bit better using a compressor uh, this will basically make your audio more your audio levels more even and the deesser will make um if you have uh, some problems with siblings the s sounds if they are very sharp the deesser can help you uh, make those less sharp so that it doesn't hurt when you're listening to yourself uh, <laughs> afterwards then i have character design 
Now this is highly, this part is highly dependent on what type of style you want to create, what type of video essay you want to do. Uh, if you want to create something that's completely original, then I highly su suggest you do something artistic, right? You can record yourself with a camera, right? That's original material. You can draw, right? That's, that's character design. I'm drawing characters that represent uh, that represents Sun Ra in this case. This is Sun Ra and this is his band. These are some people, some folks that are watching him. And it's not real life, but it's an imaginary scenario, uh, an imaginary representation of what actually happened in real life. And people can't take it down because it's mine, right? <laughs> so that's a, that's a way of um, going beyond the, the copyright rules because uh, if you just take a photo of Sun Ra from the internet, if you just take photos, works of art that other people have created and use it for yourself, it's a bit of a risky business. So keep that in mind before you get into this, okay? What kind of a style do you want on your videos? And uh, yeah, <laughs> how original can you make it? I've tr I'm, I'm trying to make it 100% original. My video right here is not 100% original simply because uh, I have music from other people, but that's totally legal as I showed you earlier with the YouTube audio library. Um, the, the one thing or the, the few segments that might be outside of that rule are the interview segments that I have here and there. But in my mind, it goes under fair use. Again, fair use is another topic for a completely... That's a, you know, I could spend several videos talking about fair use because it's such a complicated and frustrating, to be honest, uh, topic. So we'll save that for another time. Keep this in mind, though. How original can you make your content? And and what type of style do you want the visuals to be like? This is where you create your visuals, right? Digital painting. That's my visual uh, medium. Then afterwards, I'm just gonna go very quickly through this because this is the meaty part that I can help you with. Uh, this is something that is more niche oriented related to digital art, right? And then you have compositing. I'll usually use something like After Effects, most likely Premiere Pro to set, to put everything together, right? So I have several layers here of music, of voiceover, uh, the visual stuff, maybe I have multiple visual components. Um, as you can see here, I put in a little uh, handle for my Instagram as well. So there's uh, this, this is where I put everything together once it's done. I create the pieces, then I put it together in After Effects. It's very simple, really. Uh, but you can make it more complicated if you want to include more stuff, right? Publishing preparations, I want to uh, talk a little bit more about this too. You have to come up with a title and create a thumbnail. Uh, there's more to this than what meets the eye because <laughs> thumbnail creation is an art in itself. Title creation is an art in itself and getting them to supplement each, each other is can be really tough too. It's absolutely doable. Um, but, uh, it's, it's, um, it's definitely something that you, I mean, I know people that spend a full day, like eight hours, a full working day, just creating the thumbnail and the title. Uh, and that might sound crazy. That <laughs> might sound like a sick amount of work. Uh, but then again, I know also people that spend maybe, you know, 10 minutes creating their thumbnail and, and it works. So it's, um, it's a complicated topic that I can create a whole video about, to be honest. Um, and then, <laughs> ironically enough, create a video showcasing how you made the Lee Likes Music video for uh, Character Design School channel. So this is what I have right here. There's a lot of extra stuff that, that comes up down here uh, that I could talk more about, but I want to make this very quick. This this has been uh, kind of a broad, very um, very general overview of how I make my videos. Hope this has helped you a little bit uh, to get get yourself moving forward if you want to create your own video essays. And again, if you have any questions, 
for the next video, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. And uh, I'll try to make a video about that and answer as soon as possible. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Beyond.